Hello, I'm Drew Jones, and this presentation is about testing targets other than KVM with KVM unit tests. To broaden the testing domain, we also present building unit tests as FE apps. Presentation is organized as follows. We do a quick introduction to KVM unit tests, followed by a quick status of the non-KVM targets we already can test. Then we present the motivation, current status, and implementation of building unit tests as FE apps. Finally, we wrap up with a summary of the main points. So what are KVM unit tests? Well, as the name suggests, it's the test framework for testing KVM, and it also tests QMU. How does it do that? Well, we run tiny guest uh, operating systems that when they generate uh, <clears throat> traps to KVM or exits to QMU, we can test for specific behaviors. Uh, what does a unit test look like to a test developer? It looks quite familiar. It looks like a typical C program that starts in main. Uh, also, the API um, in many cases is, is familiar, such as when we mimic kernel um, named functions, IRQ enable, for example. Uh, also, we have some libc functions implemented uh, in order to uh, be easy to adopt. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, we are not in user mode when we enter this main. Uh, we are in kernel mode. If you want to learn more about KVM unit tests, there's a write-up on the KVM uh, web pages, which has a link down below. And immediately following this presentation, Eric Auger will present on KVM unit test as well as another KVM test framework. So this diagram is just to make sure we're clear on where KVM unit tests run. Uh, exactly the same place as a normal KVM VM. So what's the current status of testing non-KVM targets? Well, because a uh, KVM unit test is, uses QMU uh, for its KVM user space, then other QMU accelerators are a natural target. Uh, TCG has probably always worked to some degree and, and been uh, not only another test target, but uh, a common way to develop tests uh, for cross-arch before uh, moving the tests to KVM to see if it works on KVM and real hardware as well. Um, also, hypervisor framework and Windows hypervisor platform are supported for testing. Beyond uh, QMU accelerators, uh, other hypervisors can already be tested. Uh, for example, on S390X, the ZVM, and LPAR, LPAR hypervisors. If you want to learn more about those, then you can check a uh, presentation, KVM forum presentation from last year that was presented by Janos Fahn. Finally, uh, just a bit over a year ago, uh, VMware uh, contributors uh, posted over 50 patches to KVM unit tests in order to enable the test to run on bare metal and on VMware. Uh, the approach used for that is to launch the test from Grub. And they also uh, use a lesser known feature of KVM unit tests, which is environment variables. Um, as stated before, KVM unit tests looks just like a user space uh, C program with a main uh, where you have your uh, command line arguments that you can parse, as well as uh, it has an environment. So you can use git in or whatever uh, in order to be able to check for environment variables, which allows uh, a nice way to configure tests for different environments without having to recompile them. So what's the motivation for building these unit tests as FE apps? Well, as we want to expand the domain of uh, targets that we can test on, then choosing something like an FE app, which is, <clears throat> or an FE target, which is the reason uh, why uh, it exists in order to help operating systems and secondary bootloaders be portable, uh, we can also make KVM unit tests portable. Um, they are tiny operating systems after all. 
Uh, also, similar to the uh, uh, Grub approach, we can use environment variables if necessary to avoid um, having to recompile the tests for different targets, um, as uh, uh, FE targets also support environment variables. It's a relatively easy target to choose as well in order to, uh, to get a new target quickly. Um, and we have a couple of other benefits from choosing this particular target. Uh, for example, uh, similar to the Grub, being able to launch straight from firmware or from the bootloader, uh, we'll be able to now remove a large amount of the stack necessary when we want to develop uh, or test the tests themselves. So when emulators are used instead of hardware, which is sometimes the case for developing KVM unit tests, like actual tests for KVM, uh, now we should be able to make the uh, testing process uh, of those tests quicker because we won't need to boot an entire Linux operating system um, and even start up a KVM user space. We'll just go straight from firmware to test. Uh, and if you're thinking that maybe not all emulators or, uh, or uh, models will support uh, EDK2, uh, in order to be able to do that, well, that's don't don't be have no fear. Um, Uboot also supports launching FE apps. Also, uh, maybe a lesser benefit because I'm I'm sure that uh, uh, UEFI has several uh, unit testing um, frameworks already, so it probably doesn't need KV unit tests. But uh, we can now also test uh, these. Uh, uh, FE implementations with KV unit tests if we can run on them. So it's yet another target. Okay, here's our uh, diagram from before. Uh, on the left, it's basically the same. It just shows that in order to run the unit test now in the uh, typical virtual stack, we also need to add in the uh, virtual machine firmware. For AR64, we refer to that um, as AVMF and for x86 we refer to it as OVMF and both of them are uh, exist and are supported and developed so we can do that um, also we can cut out the entire virtual stack and go straight from the hardware or emulator uh, into the firmware which supports FE and then straight into the test So um, what's the current status of this FE app building? Well, uh, nothing is, is merged, nothing is even posted yet, but um, I do have a, a proof of concept patch set uh, available in my GitHub repository on the target FE branch. And uh, you can compile unit test as FE apps by simply enabling the uh, target FE configure switch running make. And then um, when you move these FE apps to, uh, to the FAT file system, the FE file system for the target, uh, for example, KMU and AVMF, then you can launch them. And well, currently the patch series is only for H64, but um, I have intend to expand that for x86 as well in the near future. Uh, anyway, they were great over KMU. But that's not super exciting because we could already run the tests over QMU without the need for firmware even. Uh, so the work in progress is to get them to also run directly on bare metal. And I've already started that work uh, testing with an AMD Seattle. And so, as I said, uh, x86 is in the queue. Um, naturally, I'll start with OVMF as the target. Um, but a quick second stop. OVMF over QMU for the first target, but as a quick second stop, uh, it'll be OVMF over VirtualBox because VirtualBox also supports OVMF. Okay, so um, the rest of the talk is about the implementation, uh, some of the details. So um, to do that, uh, this is kind of an outline of, of the remaining slides. Uh, first, uh, we will talk about what needs to be added the framework in order to support building as FE apps. 
Also, it needs to be removed. Um, actually, nothing is really removed, but uh, compiled in different ways or, or bypassed. And then um, some other changes that are needed in order to start supporting multiple targets. So what do we add? Well, the main thing we add is uh, the dependency on GNU EFI, which is uh, an EFI devel development environment and uh, that uses the GNU tool chain. This, uh, when linking with GNU EFI and creating uh, EFI apps in this way, it's a bit of an odd build process. The app that you're building, you start out by compiling linking as a shared library. Uh, along with OBJ copying select sections and to create this FE binary. Uh, then, <clears throat> then one thing uh, to know about all GNU FE apps is that they, they all start in an FE main function as opposed to main, uh, which you need to write yourself for your app. And in our case, for KVM unit tests, uh, we would like to have just a single FE app implementation that will work for all architectures and for all tests. That's a goal. Uh, also, the point of the FE app for, for our purposes for KVM unit tests is to do the startup um, setup before launching the unit test, which is the main function. Um, so in other words, FE main will do um, test preparation, test startup, and then call main. Another thing uh, that now that we're running on a FE target, uh, we can do is we can exit from the unit test or quit the unit test in a different way. Um, so one thing that's a bit odd about how KVM unit tests works when running over QMU and KVM is there's no easy way to, to exit from uh, running VM uh, at the VM's um, uh, time of choice without using sort of power management or something, which originally wasn't implemented for KVM unit tests. It is now uh, for at least um, ARM and PowerPC. But uh, we also want to be able to hand back a status code to the shell that launched the test. And so even then it's, um, insufficient to just implement the power management. We, we use a thing called a test dev that allows you to pass a, a status code and tell QMU uh, it's time to quit. Well, we can now, we can no longer do that because we won't have a test dev, um, at least not when running on uh, directly on the hardware. We can still have a test dev and running over QMU, sure. But um, now we prefer to use uh, the FE uh, UBFI, or runtime service to be able to, um, to exit. Also, I should point out uh, the on the second to last bullet, um, I bring up exit boot services uh, as something else we need to do after preparing to launch the guest, or launch the test. Uh, this is an F a UEFI thing, um, which basically says, uh, okay, thank you UEFI for getting our app launched, but now please get out of the way. So uh, some of the things it's it's a setup while running the app, such as uh, timer events, um, so interrupts being delivered, uh, will interfere with the test, of course. So we need to call exit boot services in order for those things to go away. So the runtime services, another UEFI thing, are left in place for us to use when we want to exit the test. Okay, so what gets uh, removed or bypassed? Um, well, our own linker script, for example, the, the KVM unit test defaults or, or original linker script cannot be used anymore because uh, GNU FE provides one. So we're, we're swapping that out. Uh, this also means any symbols in the linker script need to be either uh, avoided or maybe renamed. Uh, in the case of the AR64 proof of concept, um, I did a little of both. I avoided most of them, but uh, there was actually no reason not to just rename um, etext to underscore etext, which is a more popular name for that symbol anyway. Then um, 
another another goal then for this port is to take all of the assumptions or all of the um, references that uh, the original linker script create and shove them into as little space as possible. So uh, just into the startup code that we have in our init section is where I want those to live. That way, uh, when we build as um, an FE app, we just need to have that init section if deft out and we can continue from where we would have left off um, in the same same way for both targets. Uh, so all the common initialization between being an FE app or uh, or being a, a traditional target uh, build, QMU target, uh, can be shoved into the setup code, which is run in C. And that can be a function called from FE main. So the next slide makes this a little bit more clear uh, by illustrating it. <clears throat> so on the left, you see the original or default target. Um, and on the right, uh, so that's the flow for that for that that target. On the right, the the flow for the FE app target. Uh, so we've rearranged a little bit on who does the relocating of the uh, unit test and where the stack gets set up. Now we rely on the FE app side. We rely on the UFE loader to do it for us. Um, we also currently have the uh, preparation of the command line arguments. The the uh, environment variables and the, the memory map all kind of squeeze into setup on the original target. But on the FEF target, a lot of that stuff gets done in FE main now using the UEFI uh, uh, calls. So we can pass that information in to setup instead on that side. Beyond that, the setups should be the same, uh, ideally. And then uh, definitely a goal is that the unit test stays the same. We shouldn't need to have different code uh, running when we're a FE app versus not a FE app uh, when, when running the unit test. The unit test developers should be able to focus on just what they want to test, and it should run in, in all, on all targets. Um, and I already uh, talked about how exit can be different um, using a test dev or otherwise on the uh, original target. And on the FEF target, you can use the runtime service call. Uh, but the flow should still be the same. So this slide uh, talks a little bit about how those differences we saw on the previous slide um, on where things happen, how they're actually different as well. Um, what happens. So the top part, uh, the top line is just about the relocating and there's not much to say about it. Um, as far as getting the information, um, getting the device tree or other uh, boot time information in the original target, that's that's uh, from DT, which is actually a good thing for AR64. Uh, DT is for AR64 power and multi-boot info for x86. But, uh, um, the, it's good that we already have taught KVM tests to look at the DT for these things, because then when we switch to bare metal uh, with the FEF target, all we need to do is provide it the, the bare metal, the actual hardware DT rather than the QMU uh, machine model DT. Um, but uh, so we already can get the information. We just have to get it a little bit differently. On the FE side, we actually need to read the DTB from the FE file system whereas uh, the DT is provided by QMU directly, uh, a pointer is directly provided to the <clears throat> unit test from QMU on the default side. But um, command line arguments come from slightly different places. We could fish them out of, uh, we fished them out of DT on the original target. We need to get them from UEFI on the FE target and uh, environment variables. Um, so here's where they live in the original target. They actually live in an NRD. That's how we provide them to the unit test. But uh, on the FEF target, well, UEFI supports environment variables. So we get them with the, the native UEFI uh, service call. Memory map um, on the 
original target side is uh, something you can extract from DT or multi-boot info. Sometimes we've just uh, assumed we were going to be running on QMU for so long, as that was the main target, that some stuff is hard-coded. And uh, so that all needs to change and use the memory map that we can get from UEFI. We can't just continue to, uh, obviously for bare metal, we can't just uh, have hard-coded memory uh, map addresses. But uh, even if uh, we were using only DT to get those addresses, it wouldn't be enough uh, because uh, UEFI reserves some regions of its own for the runtime services that we want to make sure we're aware of. So we need to pass in that map to the unit test. And the unit and KV unit test framework needs to be able to handle that stuff. The last bullet um, is interesting. So we, we call setup from both. That was, that was what we, our goal was to get our flows to, to synchronize again after startup. But there's still a difference. And that difference is that uh, when we come from a, um, on the FE app target side, when we come to setup, the MMU is on and some of the devices have been initialized. Whereas on the original targets, that's not the case. So this can, um, this can uh, cause some other issues based on assumptions that we have in our startup code, our setup code, uh, and we have to be able to work around those. So that's what brings us to the next slide. So from, from the point where the, the paths should synchronize, where both targets should have the same code, which is a goal. We don't want uh, lots of uh, if target FE, then this, and else that stuff. Uh, then we need to remember that we've started with MMU on. So there might need to be at least a way to uh, go ahead and disable that in order to allow it to be reinitialized with the same path. That's quite possible to do because the, uh, without any trouble, because uh, the while the MMU is on, it's actually just using an identity map. So as long as we uh, clean the caches, when we, when we uh, disable the MMU, we should be okay to, to just turn it off, run on uh, physical memory, it will have the same addresses, and then turn it on in any way we want, again, the same way we would do for the original target. Um, but also the, the devices, some of the devices have been in use uh, at this point. So they're already initialized and they maybe need to be reset before we init, which is new because we always assumed in the uh, original target, the KMU, KVM target, that they're fresh and ready for us to start poking and using. Um, and then there's other device driver issues. I didn't have any problem writing to the UART um, right away with the uh, FE app target, but uh, I could only write 32 characters uh, because the driver is so simple, just writing and nothing else to the uh, data register um, that we would fill the FIFO and it would just get stuck. So now I've added some, some FIFO handling to the driver, still keeping it as simple as possible, which I should point out is a main goal of KV unit test. We don't want to write another operating system. We have Linux for that. Um, we want it to be so simple that uh, developers can be confident that their unit test is doing just what they want it to do and nothing but what they want it to do. And also so they can jump in and contribute quickly. Um, I already talked about bullet three, another kind of difference between the bare metal and QMU world, QMU uh, target world is sometimes you need a carriage return. Uh, we can make that configurable, of course. Other things, uh, we already talked about the MMU uh, on the last bullets there, but um, anything else that we find that, uh, well, maybe we do need a different path. We can't exactly have perfectly synchronized paths, but we could possibly do a little better job in making these things uh, dependent on environment variables or another uh, tool we have in KVM unit test, this OGSINFO thing. OGSINFO isn't quite as nice uh, as the environment variables though, because you do need to recompile when you use that. It's a compile time setup. Well, you can use the structure even after you've compiled, but then you need to write to it, um, which would be yet another path. So it doesn't help. 
So um, we talked about most of these or some of these problems already um, where we need to now get our reset the devices or get our information from different places. Uh, for x86, this may require parsing a CPI. I'm not sure yet. I, I forgot to uh, mention one problem, though, um, that I still have with AR64. Um, and that is that um, in order to use the uh, FE memory map that we get from UEFI, we need to be able to use it at the granularity that it's given to us. And currently, the implementation for AR64 unit tests only uses 64K pages. So this memory map, which doesn't have 64K alignments, uh, is no good for us at the moment. And uh, so I need to I need to rework some of the memory management framework for the page table setup framework for uh, AR64 in order to allow 4K pages as well. So um, to wrap up, KVM unit tests is already testing more than KVM. And if we add an FE app build target to KVM unit tests, we can further expand the test targets we uh, can run on uh, since that'll allow us to have a portable unit test. Uh, one of the other benefits of being able to run a unit test directly from firmware uh, is that we will be able to write the test even for KVM, not just for bare metal, but KVM, KVM unit tests uh, faster because we won't need to boot all of Linux and run uh, KVM user space on top of an, uh, an emulator if we don't have the hardware available to do otherwise. So the proof of concept for AR64 is pretty far along. But unfortunately, not all the tests are running on bare metal yet. So work in progress. Uh, also, work in progress, although not really started much yet, uh, is the x86 work to be able to do it as well. I expect uh, some different challenges there. And I actually hope that all the work uh, done by VMware in order to uh, remove assumptions about QMU being the target in order to run on bare metal and VMware already, will allow the test to run uh, more easily than um, on bare metal than um, what I'm having or my experience with AR64. Thank you. Um, if I understand correct, correctly, there's uh, going to be some question and answer time reserved after the uh, after this presentation is uh, made available. So um, please ask away.